the proliferation of plastic products in the last several decades has been extraordinary. Quite simply, humans are addicted to this nearly indestructible material. We use it on a daily basis for a wide range of products, from our grocery bags to the water bottles that we drink from. Leading to the production of over 380 million tons of plastic every year, and as much as 50% of that is for single-use purposes, utilized for just a few moments. Why is this a problem then? Well, what do you think happens to the plastic once we are done from using it? Scientists believe that most plastics take more than 400 years to degrade. So where will plastics go to then? As they will just take up land and cause pollution. So what can we do? You may think of recycling, but unfortunately, a study conducted in 2019 shows that around 91% of plastics are not recycled. It is not as simple as we should increase our recycling rates, as there are many factors that accompany recycling plastics that make it a non-viable solution, as it cannot keep up with the rate of production of plastics. And this is not the only issue of plastic pollution is also intertwined with many other global issues such as climate change as it's expected to emit 56 billion tons of greenhouse gas emissions which is as much as 14 percent of the earth's remaining carbon budget so how can we solve this problem well there are many solutions but one of the most primary solutions is change plastic and make them degradable but how can we do that? Well, it's quite simple, but first we need to understand how plastics are made. Plastics are mainly made through polymerization reactions, which are chain reactions. And there are two general types of polymerization reactions, addition polymerization and condensation polymerization. In addition polymerization, the monomers add to one another in such a way that the polymer contains all the atoms of the starting monomer. In condensation polymerization, monomers and organomers react with each other to form larger structural units by releasing smaller molecules as byproducts such as water or methane. And plastic can be made either way. But let's take a look at the most common plastic polymer, which is polyethylene. Polyethylene is made from ethylene monomers found in petroleum. Through addition polymerization reaction. Although this plastic polymer is extremely easy to produce and is quite durable, the impacts on the environment exist, hence requiring us to transition into a bio-friendly option. There are many types of biodegradable plastics, but let's again take a look at a more common one, which is polylactic acid. Polylactic acid is made of lactic acid monomers, which are obtained from fermented plants such from corn, This is done through di the direct condensation of multiple lactic acids, which release water as a byproduct. But why haven't you completed the transition to bioplastics yet, even though they're better for the environment? Well, this is due to many factors that become more key through comparing these two types of plastic. So let's compare these two plastic polymers to understand why. We will look into four major factors that influence the decision of which type of plastic to produce, starting with price. Bioplastic in this case tends to be more expensive than normal plastic. Temperature. How much heat can both of them withstand before breaking down? Polylactic acid withstands up to 180 to 200 degrees, depending on the other materials it is mixed with. And polyethylene can withstand only 120 to 130 degrees. The availability of materials. By the plastics, uh, materials need to be grown, while normal plastics simply extracted but is not renewable. Manufacture wise, greenhouse gas emissions are released during normal plastic manufacture but not in binary plastics. Normal plastics use less energy for their manufacture. And finally, degradation. So normal plastic is mentioned before it takes decades if not centuries to degrade. Meanwhile, binary plastics take a couple of months to a year to degrade depending on the conditions. But by the plastic also needs a special environment to degrade at the expected pace. It should be more clear now on why haven't we completed transition to bioplastic yet. Developing countries mainly have high demands for plastic but cannot afford to transition to produce by the plastic.
Anyone can make biodegradable plastics as the process is fairly simple, not requiring advanced technology. You can even create it from your own home. What you'll need is the following. Pot, water, stove or hot plate, tablespoon and teaspoon, starch, glycerin, vinegar, spatula, aluminum foil to spread the starch to dry. So start by measuring out one tablespoon of cornstarch, four tablespoon of water, a teaspoon of glycerin and vinegar, pour them into the pot, mix everything, then turn on the heat. After a couple of seconds, you will be able to see it's going to start to clump up and looks like toothpaste. Stir it until it looks like a gel. Bubbles will appear, keep stirring until they're gone. And lastly, spread it out the way you like it. That's it, very simple. Due to the current situation of COVID-19, we were not able to visit labs and actually do experiments to enhance our research. Also, working online for a long period of time made it very hard and it took a lot more effort as we were sitting in front of screens for long periods of time. We learned many things through the research we had conducted for this project. These are the two types of polymerization reactions, how to make biodegradable plastics, also why haven't we already transitioned completely to biodegradable plastics, among many other things. The key benefit of biodegradable polymers is that it is possible to recycle them with organic waste and released back to soil for enrichment. Their usage not only reduces the risk of wildlife by traditional plastic disposal, but also reduces the cost of labor in the area for removal of plastic because it's parsed by default. Decomposition can help boost the longevity and durability of the landfills by reducing the amount of waste that can be recycled by microbial enzyme treatments into usable monomers and oligomers. The use of biodegradable polymers in a variety of applications industries can help preserve natural environment rather than synthetic materials.